All right, who's ready for the return of the Jedi of 20 things you need to know when renting your RV through Outdoorsy or RV Share? We've gone through a whole bunch. This is the very last up to 20. Make sure you stick around. Also, we have part one and part two, so check those out as well. We're going with part three, the trilogy of the Star Wars of 20 things you need to know when renting your RV through Outdoorsy or RV Share. We're doing it right now. Number 14, blackout dates. You want to actually use your trailer too, right? Now ultimately, this trailer is for you to have fun. And the investment's kind of secondary because you didn't go into this, most of you didn't, thinking you're going to use this as an investment. You went to it, into it thinking, I'm going to go have fun all summer long and into the fall with my family. But you have to think about the dates that you want to go. Here's the thing. I charge more for all holiday weekends. It's not very much more, but I charge more because those are high demand weekends. My wife and I both know we're not going to go Memorial Day weekend. We're not going to go Fourth of July weekend. We're not going to go any of those weekends because number one, people want to rent your trailer more often on those weekends because they want to go out with their friends and do it. And number two, I don't want to deal with traffic and in a packed campground and things like that. I'd rather go the week before, the week after, some random time besides. So on both RV Share and Outdoorsy, you can set blackout dates. So ahead of time, you can go, well, we're going to take this, this weekend in July off, and you can black that out so that when people are searching, your trailer doesn't come up when they're looking at that specific date set. So if, you know, the 13th through the 15th of July, and that's when you're going to go camping at wherever, when someone goes and looks and they're wanting that weekend, your trailer doesn't show up so that you don't get messages. Because let's be honest, it's all about you guys having fun and towing your trailer to where you want to go. And in the end, it's all about having fun and making adventures. Everybody that wants to do it with themselves, secondary. It's an investment, but it's up to you to make sure you have fun first. Number 15, buying rental goods. It's kind of like the dishware you have in your cupboard when company comes over, not the good china. That's for you. So you know when company comes over and you put out the good china like for Thanksgiving or whatever your trailer is not normally like that so for us we put in biodegradable plates biodegradable silverware we have stuff in the trailer that isn't our nice stuff like we have in the house we put in what you'd normally put in if you're gonna go camping and then we have stuff that we add if we're gonna go camping for ourselves that the renters don't get they have separate towels they have separate sheets so it's just a matter of buying the rental goods that are gonna work for a rental versus for you. Uh, rental properties like, uh, uh, if you rent a house or you're, you're the landlord of a house, you're not gonna go spend $5,000 on appliances in a rental property and if the rent's $1,000 a month, you're gonna get those generic white appliances that you can get the whole set for 1,500 bucks and it works just as well because you know in the end it's a profit margin. Number 16, fishing for renters. It's like chum in the waters, trying to get a bite. I talked about it earlier, Instamatch and Smart Match. Make sure you use them because it's an easy way to get extra renters and to get other people that might not have seen your trailer to see your trailer just by sending them a quick email that's saying, hey, by the way, see so you're renting from this day to this day. Check out our trailer. Send. It's that easy. Number 17, inventory your trailer. Just like everything else in your life, you want to know exactly what you have and you want to know if someone else breaks it or steals it. So in my renter's manual, I have an inventory list. And I mean, it's got everything in there. Everything down to plates, towels, the thumb drive in the back of the TV, the TV, the bedding, the bed, uh, propane tanks, you name it, I've put it on there and I've put the value of what it is or an inflated value because in some cases it's actually a lot more difficult to get than you would think. So for example, I have my Anderson blocks, which if you guys don't know what an Anderson block is, look it up. Those things are amazing and they're going to save you a lot of time leveling your trailer. I have Anderson blocks on mine and I've had people forget to grab them when they leave and I've had to charge them for it. Well, Anderson blocks, they're about $30 per set and usually it comes in a set of two. Well, you have to buy them in a set of two and so I've had people forget them, so I have to charge them for it and they see it. It's already in the inventory, so they, if they've read through the manual, they know, well, we lost these Anderson blocks, so we're going to end up paying that, and it'll come out of their security deposit. So make sure you inventory everything that's not a part of the trailer. I mean, curtains and things like that, that's coming out of the security deposit. 
but I have no idea how much these curtains are. But I do know how much this mat was, or my pots and pans, or my coffee mugs. I know that kind of stuff. So people will know ahead of time. If they break it, they can go, uh, okay, well, that was an $8 coffee mug. Yeah, it was. Might have cost me $3, but you're going to give me $8 because it's the hassle of me having to go get the thing and buy another one that's going to be the upcharge. It's just like a hotel. People don't go to hotels assuming that the uh, that the robes are free. Put that robe on. Oh, I'm going to take this home. No, you're not. Because that robe, that hotel is going to charge you $150 for a $30 robe. Don't do that. So make sure you inventory your entire trailer. Number 18. What do the renters get for their money? Show them where the value is. So make sure in your description you tell the people what sets your RV apart from everybody else's. In our case, we have solar. Not a lot of them do. So you can boondock if you don't really need the TV, microwave, or air conditioning. You can boondock just off our solar panel. And we've had people do it for as many as five days off our 130 watt solar panel and two batteries. And that's something that some people just like to have. Other things, again, we have two uh, propane tanks and they're bigger propane tanks um, than normal. So you have extra propane for whatever you might want. We have a quick connect out front. So instead of buying those little propane canisters for your, your grill, you can just quick connect into our RV and use the propane out of the front. We have two batteries on the front. They're two 12 volt batteries versus two six because it's what it came with. But that's gonna give you more battery life that will run off the solar and that also helps. The inverter we have, it's a thousand watt inverter so it'll kind of run most everything. You could run the TV on it if you want. It'll really burn the battery quick. Or in the mornings if you're gonna cook coffee, cook coffee, if you're gonna brew coffee, uh, our Keurig you can actually run off of the inverter and then throughout the day the sun's gonna hit those solar panels and charge you up. So those are things that set it apart. Um, we have a generator. You can rent the generator and we're just going to give you it for a one-time fee. It's not a per day fee. 15 bucks. We're going to fill it up and give it to you. So if you want to go boondocking, you got it. So just make sure you set your trailer apart from others in the description. Make people understand the kind of adventure that they can have in your trailer depending on where they go. We also add what we call a welcome gift and it's Kind of, I don't know, I will ask people, hey, you guys wine people, are you beer people, are you fitness people, you know, you planning on doing some campfire, what are you doing? Uh, about 90% of the time people are like, yeah, we're wine people. Okay, you're red or white. And I'll go buy a bottle of wine, throw it in the fridge, so that when they pick up the trailer, the wine is in the fridge, chilled, ready to go. So when they get to their destination, they have a bottle of wine, my wine up on is right there, and simple and easy. Probably cost me six to eight bucks, and in the long run, I've had people that have been return renters strictly based on me just getting them a bottle of wine. Other things, and this is going to sound really silly, but I put shampoo, conditioner, uh, soaps, and things like that in a plastic baggie, and I put them in our, in our bathroom, and I just got it from a hotel. So when I go to hotels, I bring my own stuff and then just steal theirs because they, that's essentially what they want. They're just going to replace it anyway. So I'll steal it and not use it, and I'll put it in here so people can use it. So if they forgot their shampoo or soap or whatever... They got it. Number 19, create a renter's manual. It's like the Bible for your trailer and tells them exactly how to act. Super duper important and it sounds kind of silly, but trust me, it is. We have one and this is how it works. This is all their uh, information, things that they signed. They've got a copy of it. I've got a copy of it. So they have it with them and I've got my copy of it back home. Also has a pre-trip so they know when they're setting up the trailer, how to do it and in what order to do it in. Has the post trip. What to do when they're done and they're packing everything up in the order it needs to be done to make sure things go as smooth as possible. Also have little things that your trailer might have that other trailers might have. have. This has a Wi-Fi ranger. It's like a repeater. Things like that. How to use a TV antenna. Even how to use the Keurig coffee maker. You got to think of everything when it comes to uh, what people are going to want in your trailer and to make sure that they don't mess anything up. They know exactly what they're doing. And number 20, the travel log. It's simple. In our trailer, I just say, hey, write one page. Tell us how you, what you thought of the trailer, what you guys did on your trip, so other people can see. And we've done it. Other people have done it. We've got several pages of people us and otherwise that have rented the trailer to tell us exactly what they think. It's always good and it helps in the end when they are going to write a review because then they can go, 
Oh, remember we wrote that? Yeah, you wrote that, so make sure you write it on our review. Give us five stars. All right, that was part three of 20 things you need to know when renting your RV through Outdoorsy or RV Share. That was kind of the Star Wars of it, episode one. That was the New Hope. That was what are we gonna get? That was that was that was our first one. And then we had The Empire Strikes Back. That's all the mean potatoes. And now we just finished Return of the Jedi. So there you go. The trilogy on 20 things you need to know when renting your RV through Outdoorsy or RV Share. Make sure you thumbs up the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell below to keep up on all our updates. Here's some stuff. Make sure you check those out as well. And uh, my name is Garrett with our getaway plan, and I will see you again later.